and we're live. Hello, hello, everyone. Everyone's doing fantastic. I'm going to be totally honest here. I am very, very sick today. <laughs> so uh, got a little, I say a little, it's a little cold. It's probably, it's just a little cold um, going on, but it's kicked my butt. So um, I am here. I'm going to be here as much as I can. If I get a little weird, you probably won't tell the difference, right? So I <laughs> hope everyone's doing great. Um, welcome back to Project Shop. So your Skill of the Month Club. Um, I know you guys, you know, we've all been learning the basics of copywriting, one of the most important and overlooked skills in your entire entrepreneur arsenal. I hope everyone's been doing great with the skill. If you've been doing good. You've been realizing the power of copywriting and type in that chat there. I've got the power because um, you should be feeling very powerful right now, right? You've learned something so important. You've learned something that makes such a huge difference in connecting with your audience and being able to, to reach the sales that you want and, and to really communicate the message that you want, right? Like it's such a big deal. So be proud of yourselves, be excited, be happy because you guys are doing amazing and seeing the homework come in um, and everyone's super awesome. So um, as you guys know, you know, it's kind of just our intro here. Project Shop is a, a weekly series, um, you know, where you put complete your simple tasks that you complete each week. And by the end of the month, you'll be completed a project. So we are doing copywriting week one. You guys got all your basics. All right. Kind of understood what it is. You know, what is this whole copywriting deal? Why should I care? Um, we also then went into learning the copywriting formulas, right? Those formulas make everything so much easier, right? Like, ugh, it's like you crack the code. You're like, oh, I just throw these together. And all of a sudden, I kind of know what to do, right? So I think that makes a huge, huge difference. Um, and then what you guys learned last week was subject lines and headlines, how to get them to open that email, to read the rest of the content so they can see all that beautiful copy that you wrote, right? Like that's, that's even, that's your first sale right there. Your first sale was getting them to open that email and to read the rest of the stuff you wrote, right? So you realize how important that was. And that's why there was a whole week just for that, right? So as I've mentioned several times, we spend as much time on that headline as we do on the rest of, uh, of our copy, right? Like it's equal, equal, cause that's how much it matters. So, um, cause see everyone coming in here. Hello. Um, as you tell, the background is different. I am in Sweden. Uh, one of these days we'll give you guys a little tour, but right now, um, not feeling so hot. So we're going to hang out here. I'm going to drink my tea and we're going to go through the seven sweeps. And I'll explain what that is in just a minute. Um, Cause this is really, this is the week where we're polishing everything. We're making it better. We're making it pretty. We're making it shiny. Like you guys have done the work. The work's done, right? Now we're just going to put the final touches on it, dive in, figure out what you need to do to, to keep it clear and make sure you're ready. And then we're going to send that email. Okay. So if everyone's ready, type it in the chat. I'm so ready. And we're going to dive in and do this. I'll get a little presentation going here. I'm going to hide in the corner and let's go. So as we hear, we talked about all this fun stuff, finishing our projects and that we are in the final stretch right now. So um, the seven sweeps, so I'm going to explain it. The seven states, I've mentioned Joanna Weed before from Copy Hackers. She is an awesome, awesome copywriting, and she is very, very giving <laughs> with all of her information. So if you're really interested in stepping up your copywriting skills, or maybe you've decided that this is your calling and you're going to be a professional copywriter, um, she is the one to follow. Okay, She has tons of free information. She also has amazing um, courses and stuff if you really want to dive in and like get, you know, and really get into this copywriting thing. Um, but her seven sweeps is a fantastic way to copy and make sure that you're putting out the best out there that it's going to make the best sense and ultimately the best conversion, right? Which is just a fancy word to say, get the sale, right? Get them to take action. So we want to make sure that your copy is going to make the grade and you're going to make the sale. So after you finish, which I know you have all done by now, if you turn in your homework, um, we're going to go through each of these seven steps um, to do your final editing. All right. That's what we're 
Am I saying exactly what I need to say? Are they understanding exactly what this email is about? And do they know the next step to take? All right. Um, so that one idea, like we talked about, like um, whatever it is and however you're explaining it, you know, can it be turned into a kernel sentence, right? And a kernel, I mean, like, you know, you have the whole popcorn, but then you have just that little kernel, like, so someone can look at it and go, blah, 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 she's saying this, she's saying this, and go, okay, I get it. It's free and it's fast, right? That's the kernel sentence. Can they look at that and go, okay, so the point that she's saying is this and this. Can they boil that down? That's a real great test of whether or not your copy is clear. Uh, and do they know the obvious next step takes? We talked about that, right? If not, you want to look into, are there more words that could clarify what you're trying to say? Perhaps even fewer words. A lot of times we... We have words, you know, really vary and all this, and we take those out. It's actually much more clear when we say it's just this, right? Um, and does it have one idea per sentence? So if you find out that you don't feel it's very clear, this is another way to sweep and go through and go, okay, maybe I'm mentioning two different things like, oh, we're really fast and it's really a pretty purple. Okay, like that's two ideas to sentence. That's that's maybe that's too much. So let's take that out and try that. Okay, um, so we go through that. You're gonna find the problems, fix it and then sweep it again, test it for clarity again, right? So after you make your changes, you wanna go through and, and do it at that final time. Like, is it still clear? Is everything still clear? When it passes that test, we can move on to the next one, right? Does everyone understand clarity? Is, is, is that clear? Is my clarity clear? Type in the chat, you're following along, do it okay, all right? Good, good. All right, so we are gonna move on to the next one, so. We have the voice and the tone sweep, All right? So this is sweep number two. Voice and tone are very similar, but to distinguish it, think of this. Voice is always happening, right? Voice is, is always you, that's you know, what you're saying, but the tone is delivery specific, right? So it's how you communicate your deeper emotional feelings or where you're at. So. Think of it like this, right? So, I mean, your your mom has a voice, right? You have your mom has a voice, and you know, like, oh, that's kind of how my mom says, um, you know, this or that, just the the type of voice she uses, type of style that she uses. But the tone will change very much on whether you're in trouble, she's calling you for dinner, she needs help, something's happening, right? Like that's the tone. Her voice is her voice, and you know when something's out of character, and not like that's not that doesn't sound like my mom. That doesn't sound like something she would say. But the tone is about the delivery, right? So it can still be her voice, but that tone is like, you know, young lady, get over here or whatever, right? So that's that's the difference between voice and tone. Don't overthink this, but I, it can be kind of confusing. So there's, that's what you do there. So um, everyone got that voice and tone? Makes sense, okay? Like I said, it's not the biggest deal that we're learning, but it's just something neat to kind of understand. So a quick note as we move on to is that um, brand voice. This, this is why doing the work to understand your brand and knowing your brand voice is so important. I, I do a teaching on brand identity and you can check it out on YouTube. We'll do more in the future. Um, but it's really, it's so important to know beforehand, you know, what is my brand voice? What words describe my brand? What fictional character like, or a real person is most similar to my brand voice, right? That gives you a, a way to kind of identify and personify it. Um, we can't dive into all of that now, but this helps a little for you to understand what is that voice. And we talked about it before, you know, a lot, for a lot of us, our brand is us. So our voice is us. It's, and it's very much, you know, how we would say it, what we would do. Um, in other circumstances, it, our brand voice isn't us. And I think I, I used the, the example of a nursing skill facility, right? So you might be a prankster and a jokester and love to make jokes and you run a skilled nursing facility, then that's not your brand voice, okay? Jokes, you know, are not really what's going to help someone feel comfortable and confident in going to a skilled nursing facility. So we said that voice might be more nurturing and caring and though informative, right? So that's where the personality and the brand voice it can be very different depending on the product. But for a lot of us, that when we are our brand, that's the difference. Is that it really is us. Um, but you want to be very clear on that, right? So, um, you know, is it Coca Cola? Is it Monster Truck Guy? Is it Mercedes? Is it Martha Stewart? Oprah? You know, what is your your brand voice? All right. Um, so as and I mentioned that here, you'll see that here um, in case you want to. You guys can always take screenshots of these as well if you ever want to just look at the slides later and um, 
of course you'll get this and you'll have your replay too. So check that out. Um, but that's just a quick note of understanding your brand voice as well. Yes. Cause what you're doing, what we're doing is we're going to go through and we're reading line by line and we're saying, does it sound right? Is this, my brand voice, you know, there may be sometimes, you know, where we go a little off character or it gets a little boring. We get kind of stuck into our old, you know, English class, you know, and then she did not believe like we just get proper and we kind of just get boring, you know, and, and it happens to all the best of us. Um, we'll go back and this is why, you know, Stephen and I, you know, we help read each other's copy and I'll go, okay, you got a little wordy here and he'll go, okay, that's a little too crazy, Tanya. And so we check ourselves, you know, we have to do that. So this is where you go through and go, is this voice clear? Does it sound right? Does it sound like me or does it sound normal? Is it conversational? Does it stay conversational? That's what I mean. Like, does it get too wordy or sales robot-y, right? Like, you want to keep that conversation. Um, excuse me, I need my tissue here. Um, you know, so does it have the same tone throughout? You know, if you start out with a real fun, hey, everybody, wild, and then you kind of get boring at the end. <laughs> mm, excuse me, guys. Um you know, is it a serious morning? And then you turn into like a jokester at the end where you're cracking jokes. Like that's not the same tone throughout the whole thing. So you want to make sure that you have the same tone as you go through from start to finish, you know, same mood. Um, and does it leave in the appropriate mood at the end? And then um, you go back and start all your sweeps again, right? So check that out, make sure your voice is right, and then check it for clarity again. All right, making sense? Good, good. Okay. So we fix it and sweep from the top, as you see that there. So now, the next two sweeps kind of work together. Um, we'll go through them separately, but they kind of work together. And it's the so what and the prove it sweep. And this is really your step of editing that's for believability, right? So we talked in a couple lessons back about those five, um, those five doubts that buyers have, right? Is it for me? It, you know, it's not for me. It's too much. I can't do it. I don't believe you, right? All of those things. And this really falls right in line with that. You know, as we're going through, they're going to have those same questions as they're reading through whatever you're presenting them. So editing for believability is where we come and discuss, um, you know, we, we address, you know, am I making it believable? Am I proving it? Am I making it matter to them? Right. So that that's kind of what our next section is. Those are the next two steps. And we're going to start with. So what sweep? So this really is an easy one. Right. You're going to come through and you're going to read line by line and ask yourself, you know, in the voice of the customer. So what? So you're going to read it and go, well, our product is, you know, the sleekest model and go. So what are and then is there an answer there? Right. Is and and is it valid? You know, you can be like, so what? You're, you're like, you're right. You know, so what? What does that actually really mean? I mean, that's what we need to bring into there. So, so what? Why do I care? You know, why does this even matter to me at all? And so you're asking yourself, does it have a clear point? Does it have value to the reader? This is what we come back to. Always is going to come back to this, right? So whatever it is, then we need to highlight anything that doesn't have a clear point. We need to go back through and fix it and then run our clarity for all of them again, right? Sweep back from the top. Okay. So that was a really easy one, right? You just go through and get super sarcastic and go, so what? And just like put in your 13 year old teenage voice and just, and, and then answer it because that's the thing is ultimately that's the, what they're going to be thinking. What's in it for me? So what, why do I care? And you need to be able to adjust your copy in such a way that addresses it in a way. So there's no more. So what? So like, Oh, Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, that works. I get it. Right. So this is this making sense, guys? Everyone with me? I know I'm like my cheerleader vibe slightly off today, but uh, you guys doing good. Everyone's making sense, everyone. Um, all right, so that's the so what. So let's move to our next one, and that's the prove it sweep. So do you have anything that helps prove these statements? Can you identify? And then as you go through for the prove it, you know, maybe you can look and go, oh, maybe this is a good space where we can write, you know, um, that data point or we can insert that testimonial where she says she was able to finish this so quickly, right? So you want to go through and just identify areas that could benefit from proof. If you make some sort of statement um, and they're like, oh, well, I'll prove it, see where that could be, right? And so what really is proof as you're writing? What is proof in your copy? And this can be social proof. So as much as, look, we have this many people who have gone along, um, 
this many people are following this, this many people have joined this, right? Or an actual testimonial, someone saying how great their product is, how great of an experience that they've had with it. Um, oh, just want to make sure I have my microphone the right way. Um, testimonials, right? So, or logos from companies that have used your product, right? That always helps. If you ever see like a, a SAAS product, just like software as a service product, um, I'm using fancy terms. Let's see. Um, MailChimp. Let's go back to MailChimp. You guys are all familiar with MailChimp. Um, you know, they'll have logos at the bottom, like, look at the trust uh, companies that trust us, and they'll have those little logos, right? If there's something like that that works for your industry, that alone can be social proof is, or proof, right? The prove it section. Um, screenshots of the features of the products, right? That's actually proof. Like Sometimes it's like, okay, it's, a, it's really shiny. Let me see a picture of it being shiny. Let me see something in motion of it working, right? That alone can be a version of proof, right? So as you're starting out, you might think, well, I don't have testimonials yet. I don't have this. The proof can be in your product, right? The proof can be in the thing you're presenting. So make sure they, they can see it, prove that it's beautiful, show that it, it is has the things that you say. Um, demo videos, that can be a way of proof as well. You know, if you have something that, um, something as simple as this is how you download it, or this is how simple this is, or this is how, like we said, beautiful this is. Um, and then data points. Obviously, data points work. Like we increase this by 30%. We did any sort of data you have um, in numbers that can be presented uh, that will help in what you're saying. Remember, it's not about just coming back and filling it with a ton of sales information. It's about what fits in your copy are there points that you can come back in and go, you know what, that right there, it would really help if I can just, you know, bring that point to life by showing that testimonial or showing that little, I can show that version, I can show what this looks like, right? So again, it's not a landing page, this is an email. So landing, we're not going in and presenting 15,000, look, this is why we're really good. You just wanna make sure it goes along with your copy. And these are different ways to use it, okay? Um, Another thing I just threw in here was Proofly. Proofly is a great, like just another example of, of ways people should prove, show that they're they're valid. Um, Proofly is really interesting. You may have seen it. You go to a website and usually they want you to sign up for something or maybe it's to join a course or something like that. And as you are there, a little window pops up kind of at the bottom, a little box pops up, I should say. And it says, um, you know, Oh, look, Tanya from Czech just signed up, you know, and so and so from Indianapolis just signed up. They keep showing you. And it's this sense of social proof and something that's happening in the moment that just again goes, oh, wow, look, all these people are using it. That's just another like that's proving that this product must be viable or this course must be worth something. All right. So that's something you can check out, too. It's a paid service. I don't recall the, the price off my head, but it's something you can check out as well. So, um, you know, ultimately, can they look and go, yeah, that's definitely true. I can see what they're saying. There's true. It's presented right there. So this is your prove it suite, right? Got it? Everyone feeling proved, feeling the truth, <laughs> All right? If you got any questions, just go ahead and type them in the chat. Um, and of course, we'll have Q&A at the end if anyone has questions. Uh, so looks like we're doing good. I'm going to jump into number five. We have the specificity Sweet. I think this is the first time I've said that word completely right. Um, <laughs> where can you be more specific? All right. This, the clarity sweep and the specific sweep are probably the most important. I mean, they're all important together, but as we've discussed, clarity is such the huge part, right? And clarity, am I being clear? Am I being clear? Now, specific takes it that extra step forward. You know, am I saying it's really nice or am I saying it's, you know, instead of nice is it's soft, fluffy and cozy, right? Like that's more specific, you know, does it have lots of features or does it have seven? You know, these are areas where we can, we can really start to, um, to paint the picture, right? For our audience. So where can you be more specific? How can you engage their imaginations, right? I know it sounds kind of lofty, like, ooh, but that's the same thing. You know, when you give me something specific and clear, the more I'm able to put it together and go, yeah, I can, I can totally see that happening. I can see how that works. So we want to be able to use more. So can, how can you engage their imaginations further? Um, are you focusing on one topic? Right again, that's specific. Are we back to being very specific? And are you connecting the dots for them? Okay, can my reader figure out what I'm trying to say? And when I say connecting the dots for them, you can never be too obvious, right? It's like, oh my gosh, look at this color, it's so beautiful, versus, 
look at this color. It's hot pink, right? Like, I love this, right? You can never be too obvious. Um, like I said, look at that color versus look at that color. It's hot pink, right? Like they know, they might know, but just, just being so specific, pulling out, connecting the dots. It's 50%. You know, this is only $29.99. That's 50% off. You know, that's savings of half. I know you guys have heard that before. They've told you, you know, oh, look, it's $30. You know, it's, let's say it's, it's $60. Now it's only 30. And you're like, well, clearly that's half off. And they're like, and that's half off. You're like, oh my God, it's half off, right? Just that extra step of being specific. It makes such a big difference. Okay. Um, you know, or this, you know, our thing is so fast. That means you have more time in the morning or that means you have more time in the morning so you can have plenty of coffee or you can have that extra time to do this. Like it's specific, right? Tell them what it means. Roll it out, spell it out, create their imagination for them, right? That is a big difference. So we have that here. That means you have more time in the morning versus, you know, well, like I said, that's, that's just spelling out for them. That's just telling them. Like, that's what it means. This, this, you get it? You see it? Like, you're, you're connecting the dots. All right? So now we're going to move on. This is um, sweep number six, the heightened emotion sweep. So does it resonate with your audience? Like, how does it feel on an emotional level rather than a transactional level? So instead of just features and pricing, do they understand the actual value that they're going to be getting from you? So do they feel good about what they could be getting, what their lives could look like? Do they get the emotion? You know, you, you get that emotion, right? And you are going to be helping that prospect commit to the solution easily. And you think why emotion? And it's, you know, emotion is said that we really purpose that we buy an emotion. A lot of us don't think that way. We think we're rational beings and we're like, well, I didn't buy this shirt because I was feeling down. I bought it because it was on sale. But what happens is we tend, we do, we buy an emotion, we rationalize it after. And so we, we jump to that emotion, how it feels. And people are not buying a product. They're buying a better version of themselves. And that is, it cannot be overstated, right? People are not buying a product. They are buying a better version of themselves. And that's why meeting them in that place of what that life looks like after, what it could be, who they could be, what it means, you know, when everything's said and done, that's what we talk to and that's what gets them excited. After we've presented that and let them know we understand, of course, we discuss features and benefits and price and costs and all of those things. But this is why we come to this first. And it's so important that we have this emotion built into what we're writing. Okay. So, um, you know, they don't care about how and why. Not yet, at least. They care about what's in it for them. All right. And that's what we're coming back to. What is in it for them? Um, this little, you know, it's all about me, deal with it. And that's true. It's, it's all about the customer. You may be really excited about your product and you're really excited about what it can do, but it's not about that yet. It's about what it does for them and what their life can look like afterwards. Okay. So, um, oh, I have a, a little like note here too. So I was saying when I was a, a little example of this. Okay. So when I was 20, I bought a timeshare, right? I bought a timeshare and the, the price was crazy for me at the time. Um, I mean, it was a high price anyway. Um, but as a 20 year old, you know, on their own, uh, it was $10,000 and they told me all the features and all the options and all the payment plans. And, you know, they were really trying to like, you know, then you could do this, you could do that and all those things. But it's like, uh, it's not, but it's still a lot of money, right? It's still a lot of money. It was a very scary step to take. And, but the thing that really resonated with me and emotionally connected with me to get me to buy is that they were like, you always have a place to take a vacation. And by owning this, you always have somewhere to get away. You don't have to worry about avoiding a vacation. That's a thing of the past. Like you have a place to go. And that that life that they could imagine for me that they presented say, you know, look, this is what it could be like. That was like, oh my gosh, because that's the thing you think, oh, I'd love to take a vacation. Oh, how much does it cost? Where would we go? Well, all these places are set out for you. They were already there. It was already paid for. Um, you know, like there was not an excuse anymore. Just, I just had to get there. And that was the emotional connection that got me to pay $10,000. Okay. 
guys. So like that, you know, hit me because I was like, you know, vacations weren't something that we got to have. And they were telling me that I could always have it. And, you know, money would no longer send in the way. Like I was sold literally. And that's the emotional connection that you want to bring. You want to show them what their life can be. All right. And I'm not condoning that anyone goes out and buys a timeshare. I've right? actually since sold it. Um, but that's the difference. And, and it served its purpose for a wonderful amount of time. But that is the thing, right? That is what you're presenting. Okay. So what we're going to do as you do this sweep is you're going to ask yourself, you know, am I focused on my customer's value? Can I focus my message on what my customer is currently feeling? I think I mentioned before, um, there's a gal, her name's Talia Wolf, if you guys are interested. Um, she she really focused, she focuses on landing pages, actually, she's like a landing page guru, but she does everything based around emotion. And she she has a list of like 223 emotional triggers that make people buy. Like she really gets into the psychology of it. So if you ever have quote unquote extra time, that may be someone to go check out um, because it's uh, it's amazing when you really get into this, understand what you're bringing to people. And it also gives you a, a nice pat on your own back, right? To remember when you feel caught up in the sales or it can start to feel icky to you, you come back to the vision of what you are really providing. And that's really where you're meeting your customer, okay? So am I using the right words to bring the emotions I wanna create? You know, we gave you those list of emotional words on your last lesson, as you could go through and see, like these are words that create curiosity or fear or, um, you know, excitement, right? So you have those. Have you been using those? Are there enough? As you go back through your copy, did I use them? And am I using testimonials to address specific concerns and hesitations? That's another thing, right? If if you know, like, you know, a lot of them are concerned that it's going to take too much time and you have a testimony that's like, I was surprised at how quick this was. I was, you know, I was worried it was going to take too much time and amazing it was done in 30 minutes. Then that's the testimony you want to use. Okay. That's the one. That's the one going here. So a nice little um, check, uh, you know, that kind of will give you a red flag or not is if you're using a lot of us and ours. You know, if you try us and what our thing does and, you know, we, we, we switching those to you and yours, you know, when you're experiencing this, when, you know, this can be yours, this can, you know, that's a nice thing. If you're noticing that there's a lot of us and we and ours, you know, you're focusing on you then. Right? So see if it even sometimes it even works to go and literally just switch that to you and yours and see that it's experiencing from them, you know, this is what you can have, this would be yours, this is, this is, you know, it's about you, right, so that's a nice little trick as well as you're going through this section, so does this make sense, we're doing good, right, this is um, emotional sweep, we're meeting them in this place, you know, and you'll notice this just common thread, right, we, from the very beginning, we talked about, you know, target market, understanding what your customer is going through. What is their pain? What are you solving? Right. It always is going to come back to this emotional thing. It's so much more than just thinking I've made this good thing. They should get it and buy it. Right. It, there's so much more that goes on. And so that's why it's, I always explain it's so important to understand all those pieces of your target market, your whys and all of those things. OK, so moving on, looks like everyone's good. And we are going to go into our final sweep. So we have the zero risk sweep. So let's say we've done everything else right. They've come down, we've proved it. We have the right tone. We're meeting them emotionally. We're showing all the things, but they're still, oh my gosh, but what if it doesn't work? Okay, what if it doesn't really do what it says it's gonna do? Um, we wanna reduce that that risk for, again, for the one reader. If, if there's, there's several things that they can be concerned about. So we wanna find out what that one specific reader's biggest concerns are and what would feel risky for them? What would keep them from moving forward? Okay, so the, the five risks that we tend to see here that they're concerned about is performance. Will it work the way you say it's gonna work? Like they're saying this is gonna be, but is it really gonna work that way? Or value, is it worth what I am going to pay? You know, they wanna make sure they're not overpaying for something, of course, <coughs> excuse me, design. Will it cause harm or bring fiction into my life? Like, will it be an issue, you know, or people won't like, um, or, or, you know, make it difficult, right? It's like, okay, this is nice, but it doesn't fit here, or it's bulky and ugly, and it's just going to be like friction. Like, it's, that makes it sound a lot more serious, like, will it cause harm or friction? But of course, I mean, actual harm, yes, I'd be concerned for sure. Um, and just difficulty. It's like, it's ugly, it's bulky, it's difficult to use, it's loud, right? That's something they want to think about. Social success. 
will the people that matter approve? Right. So if you're the one to bring in something, so let's say in an office atmosphere and they're like, you're like, yeah, this is going to be great. It's going to be great. And you, you bring it in and it sucks. Everyone's going to be unhappy with you. And that is a concern for somebody. You know, if you get someone to everybody to try something and it, it doesn't work right? So they, that's a concern for them is a social success. And lastly, joy. Will I be satisfied or am I going to be improved, really improved personally by it? That's what we want to know right? You don't have to handle all five of these, but you need to see at least what, which one of these you're going to be addressing, which one of these that your one reader is more than likely to be experiencing and, and go into that. So some ways to reduce this risk is of course, if you have some influential users, somebody who's using your product and go, look, they're happy with it, right? Um, Specific testimonials that directly address those risks. Like I said, if someone's concerned that it's not going to work the way it should, and you have a testimonial that specifically talks about, I'm so glad it works exactly the way it should, voila, that's the one that you're going to go into, right? Um, something, quantities of users, you know, we, we, it's that herd mentality. If, you know, 400 other people have done it, then you're going to be like, oh, okay, well, I should, you know, do that. I'm sure, you know, you don't want to be the first one who had parachuted. OK, you want to know, oh, look, all these people have done it successfully. I'm feeling comfortable now jumping out of an airplane. But the first guy, maybe not so much. Right. Pretty brave guy. So um, another one is data points of user success. Right. These are all very fancy general ways to just say, um, you know, if you have this many people or look, anyone who's used this has gotten 100 more leads. Like that's a data point of user success. Someone has used it and they're, and this has happened. They can go, wow, oh, that's amazing. Okay, this sounds like something I want. Um, data points of new users in a, in a time. So like, so it's a time frame one. Like, you know, we've gotten this many in 24 hours. Like, wow, okay, that's great. Um, social success, again, teams love it. This These teams have, have increased their ability to talk or do this or do that, right? Like that's kind of that social success. And info about what happens next, right? So this is, um, you know, okay, so like once you're here, we're going to take care of you. We're going to have those next things. You're going to have, you're going to have the support, right? We want to know like, okay, after I bought it, what if something breaks down? Oh, you're going to have that. So these are some ways that you can offer reducing risk. And of course, guarantees, if there are money back guarantees, all of those things. Um, I mentioned those last though, because those are the kind of the easiest ones to jump in. But there's a lot of other ways for us to also meet us and, you know, meet, meet our customers in that zero risk, you know, and reducing that risk on the emotional level, the conceptual level before we just jump into money back guarantee. Okay. So that's why, of course, that's an option. If that's something that works for your business model. Okay. So that the, that's the seven sweeps guys, you guys made it through. Okay. <laughs> I made it through. I'm pretty excited. So seven sweeps, uh, 30 minutes, really. It's a lot we, we talked about, but once you kind of see it and go, is this clear? And especially for this assignment, I think you guys had a minimum of writing two sentences each. So at minimum, we're talking six sentences that you guys have. All right. So to do a sweep for that, I think you're going to find it very easy to go through these and to do, um, let's see, what do we have? It is, we have clarity, we have voice and tone, we have the so what and prove it. We have spec honestly, I'm specific specificity, <laughs> heightened emotion, and zero risk. Right? So go through those, make sure it meets all those, and you're gonna have copy that should be strong and ready to convert. Okay. So now that we have that, everyone feeling okay with that with the seven sweeps before we move on to calls to action. Calls to action are gonna be pretty easy, but we're good. Seven sweeps make sense. Okay, and you guys got Q&A, of course, you can email me if you got any questions about that as well. All right, so call to action. This is the fun part. This is where we just tell people what to do. <laughs> this is the action I want you to take and how to do it. How to do it is also important, right? Like, you know, get at me. Like, that's very, it's not clear. Like, is it a phone call? Is it a message? Is it a DM? What do you want? Okay, so tell them what you want to do. Um, so like, again, CTA, you'll hear that a lot. It's just a fancy way of saying call to action. It's again, it's just a fancy way of saying, tell them what to do and how to do it. So something to keep in mind with call to actions is that 
we always, we always, people are, people in general are wanting to do one of two things. We want to go into towards something positive or we want to, you know, remove ourselves from something negative. So that call to action, get creative and use something, push them to something positive or pull them from something negative. All right. So if you are, you know, push them towards something positive, like um, click here for faster delivery, that's something positive or click here to avoid missing deadlines. Right. So you have some product that helps them do that. That's pulling them from something negative. You see the difference there. Right. But either of those are great. You know, we just want to focus on like, oh, that's I do want faster delivery. I want to click or yeah, I don't want to miss deadlines anymore. So we're pushing them to something positive or pulling them from something negative. OK. <clears throat> I'm going to tear some tea. Let that sink in for a second. So another thing we want to do is make our call to action benefit oriented, right? So you'll see here on the left, we have the usual is, you know, click here, download, submit, enter, request, continue. But to step it up a little bit, you know, get a little more specific and, and benefit again, benefit oriented, you know, get my ebook, not just click here, like give me my ebook or <clears throat> not just, you know, join the list, but stay connected, join the fun. Let's talk, right? And it's for a message call to action or something. Um, give me more. Watch right now. Okay, we see the benefit of what happens when I click. Right, so that's nothing. Just keep it to keep it benefit oriented. And again, as you see, you guys, these are very short things. Your call to action, it's a button essentially, could or a sentence in, in certain circumstances. So we're not writing a paragraph or anything here. But we want to focus on the action and benefit of words. You know, what will they get or what will they avoid? At the same time, we also want to be clear over clever, right? Like, let's kick it. That's really cute, but get started now is going to be a lot more clear, okay? So keep a good balance there. Just keep that in mind, okay? Um, you know, get with the in crowd versus get started now. Same thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, so using urgency when appropriate. Again, um, 50%, you know, get 50% off today only. If that's really the case and it's an appropriate time for that, then that can be your call to action. Um, RSVP now, only eight spots left. Again, great urgency, call to action. We've talked about authenticity, so you know about that. Um, so that's, that's it, right? So this is your task. All right. You have already written everything. You've gotten everything down. You have your subject. You have your headline. You have your copy. You have your purpose. You're one writer. You're per all of those things. Now you just got to go through and this is your final edit. So as you go through your final edits, you're going to use the seven sweeps as your navigation code, navigation bar to take you through and go, okay, first, is it clear? First, is it, you know, then is my tone okay? Then is it, and you're going to adjust it. See where you can add some proof and testimonials. See where you can be more specific at explaining what you're going to do. And remember this email, ideally guys, this email, and I've seen some of your guys stuff come through. This is, you're going to send this because you, you, this is a sales email. And I'm, as I know the holidays are coming, it's a great sales time. And so I'm excited to have you go through and finish this email, send it out to your clients and customers and share it on social media, wherever it goes and get some results, right? So use these things to get really clear, really specific about what the thing is that you're selling. Uh, make sure you're hitting all these seven sweeps and eventually let this become a habit. You know, ultimately that's what this is. You know, the seven sweeps should become a tool and the worksheet that you guys have. Um, I will tell you this right now is the only one, this concept is everywhere, but the seven sweeps is we were not able to actually find it existing in a worksheet form, like on, or even a list anywhere. Like it was the craziest thing. So as we know right now, this is the only list in existence <laughs> that has the seven sweeps on one page. So this is a very great tool to just have, you know, somewhere. So when you are doing your writing, you can quickly go through and go, okay, it's got this, it's got this, got this, got this. Looks like it's good, ready to go. Boom, send it out. Eventually until it's just becomes like ingrained in your brain, right? Or maybe never will. And you can always use the list. Totally fine. All right. So that's the point. Get this, finalize the copy, get that strong CTA and send it out, email it out. Right. And then tell me the bazillion sales that you made. Okay. So that's it guys. Um, turn in your final email. That's going to be your task. Once you've done these things, I want to see a copy of your beautifully finished final edited sales email that's going out as usual. I'll give you guys some feedback and 
and then email them, okay? So anyone have questions? Are we good? Everyone's good? Making sense? Lovely. All right. Um, yeah, so nobody has any questions. Then I'm going to probably head out pretty soon because I'm slightly dying. I'll uh, stop out of the slide presentation so you can see my lovely <laughs> dying face here. But um, it's not as cold, by the way, guys. As, I mean, it's going to get cold, but it's not as bad as I, I expected. Oh, it's been, <laughs> excuse me. It's been really sunny, actually. There's a beautiful horse outside, and, um, and we actually see from these windows right here. And some, I call them hippie cows. I know they have a proper name, but they have really long hair and big horns. And so they kind of have like shaggy thing going over their eyes. I call them hippie cows. They're really furry. They're like um, wow, some Scottish. Some, I don't ask me. I can't even make it up if I wanted to. They're furry cows. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Well, I hope everyone's feeling excited. This is like your first full month of Project Shop. And we get some really exciting stuff coming next uh, next month. Next month, guys, um, we are diving into design. Oh, my gosh, design. And it's going to be a totally different style, um, different pace as far as it goes. We have a lot of interactive tutorials. So your homework should be really fun. Um, not that this hasn't been just, you know, like an ultimate party, right? Um, but this is... Uh, this is going to be really neat because you're going to get in and you're going to, I think you're going to learn some really exciting tools from this and feel really strong and be able to um, have some great designs when you don't have a designer available. So this, I think, it's, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I, it's, it's a tool using Canva, which you may, uh, may or may not have used before, but even myself, um, who's been using it for a long time, learned a lot of new stuff as I was preparing this lesson. And they just recently changed their entire interface. So it is actually very new. So we're using all of the newest interface. So as you jump in, or if you are a long-term user of Canva, um, you may not know or haven't changed to their new version yet. So this is a great opportunity to jump in and learn and also see all the new stuff that they've added. So it'll be really cool. So I'm really excited about that. It's going to be super awesome. Um, so I can't wait for next month. But enough of that for now. Finish your edits, finish everything. So everyone's good for Q&A. Um, thanks so much for showing up. Thanks so much for bearing with me in this in this cold um, and being slightly off. And um, you guys have a wonderful week and I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye.